Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It's rather dark out here. I'm sitting on the front porch. I have my water. And I have my grilled cheese sandwiches. Tillamook grilled cheese sandwiches that I just made not too long ago. <clears throat> Um, for a video for my Peter Does Stuff channel. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do a little bit of a mukbang out here and eat a little bit of these sandwiches while I'm vlogging. Alex, today, um, he worked in the morning until about noon and then he went over to his aunt's house and he spent, well, he just got home. So what time is it right now? Let's see. It is 7.24, he got home about 20 minutes ago. So he was at his aunt's house from like noon until seven, spending the day um, hanging out and visiting with his grandma today. And then they got food, they got Thai sushi house, and he got like fried rice and stuff because he loves that from that place. So um, yeah, he's been gone most of the day and I've been filming videos and doing stuff around the house. And tonight we are going to, well, when we get, when I get done vlogging, he's upstairs relaxing right now. That's why I'm out here. Um, it's a little chilly outside tonight, but it's not too bad. I can, I'm going to vlog for a little bit. I'm really, really tired today, you guys. Uh, this whole, well, first of all, <clears throat> when I get done vlogging, I'm going to start putting up the vlog and then I'm going to relax a little bit with him. And then we're going to watch Blonde tonight um, on Netflix. And um, then after that, I have two more movies left to watch. I have Living and Causeway. Living is because, um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Bill Nye, Nye is up for Best Actor, and Causeway is because there's an actor that's up for Best Supporting Actor. And then I'm done with the Oscar movies. <laughs> and it has been such a blast watching these movies. I mean, it really, really has been fun, and I've really enjoyed it, but... Um, it's been a heavy and long week because um, it's so funny because I was thinking today like, oh, people must think it's crazy. Like I make this like my duty that I have to watch these Oscar movies. No, it's just something that I wanted to do. You know, I'm, I'm happy that I did it and it's been really fun and um, and kind of reading the articles and stuff. It's like I feel like I have a real opinion about everything that's going on in all these movies and whatever. But all of these movies have been so sad this year. I mean, like... Just the majority of them are really, really sad and um, and long. And I'm watching like three movies a night, which means I'm going to bed super late and not getting a lot of sleep. And so I'm really, really tired the next day. And so I've kind of been like tired every single day this week. I think you guys know that. Um, what One night, two nights ago was it, that I went to bed early. But other than that... I've been like really tired every day this week because I've been watching these movies. And so I told Alex, I said, I texted him today and I said, I'm gonna be kind of ready for this Oscar <laughs> week to be over. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow night we're going out to dinner with um, two friends, two couples of ours that we're friends with. So that'll be fun, do something different. And Tanya tonight, she was asking me, she was like, um, she called me, she was like, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, um, well, Alex, I'm." Alex and I are going to watch this movie. Out of all the movies, that was like the only one that he really had any desire to see. And um, so she was like, um, well, I was just wanting to see if you wanted to go to the Meyer with me. <laughs> and I was like, well, if I didn't have plans with Alex, I would. So um, I said to him when he came in, I said, are you tired? Because I'm exhausted. And I go, well, we don't have to watch the movie tonight. And so if I go inside after I'm done vlogging and he doesn't want to watch the movie, then I'm going to go to Meyer with Tanya. If not, then we'll watch the movie. So anyway, um, last night, I finished Triangle of Sadness. Oh, I know what I wanted to say on here. I kind of talked about it when I drank the root beer a week ago. But Troy has been begging for me <laughs> to drink a Diet Coke like when I used to in those plastic cups. I don't know if it's because it's been winter time. Like Diet Coke for me I, is something that I associate like out of a can, like in a plastic cup with ice. It's something that I kind of associate with the summer. Although back in the day when I did it during my vlogs, it probably wasn't the summer either. But um, anyway, I haven't had any Diet Coke at the house in 
I don't even know the last time that I had it. It was probably when I bought it at Costco with Caroline. And that's been like two, three months. I had a bottle of Diet Coke because one of Alex's friends, um, she gave me like a Valentine's Day present. She gave me like some candy and then like a bottle of Diet Coke, which was real sweet. And so I had that not too long ago. Um, and then I bought like that case when Alex was going to Spain, I bought that case of like the little, uh, little root beers, the A&W root beers. But other than that, like I haven't had any like soda in the house. Um, and it hasn't been intentional. Um, it hasn't been like I've been trying to drink less soda or anything like that. I just haven't had it in the house. It was funny because Troy mentioned it and he was like, I miss you drinking a, a Diet Coke and whatever. And I was like, well, I kind of miss drinking a Diet Coke. So <laughs> I told Alex that we need to go to Costco sometime this weekend because we need like toilet paper, paper towels. There's some other stuff that we need. And I said, we need to go. So I'll probably actually get a case of Diet Coke this weekend. But the thing is, our refrigerator is so packed right now. Last night, we went to Puccini's for dinner. And Alex got a large cheese pizza. And so the rest of it is in the, is in the fridge. Then I have a bunch of stuff like mashed potatoes and all this kind of stuff that I bought, macaroni and cheese, whatnot. And we have hummus in there and stuff. That we all that we bought after he came back from Spain and before he left, that's still in there. That's still good, and so we have a lot of stuff in the refrigerator, the refrigerator right now. So I don't even know where I would put tons of Diet Coke if I bought it. So there's that. Um, we could keep it in the pantry, I guess, and then put a few of them at a time in there. So there's that, and then um, so yeah, we need to do that. But last night we went to Puccini's for dinner. And um, it was really good. We were like one of the only people in there. And I, Alex got a cheese pizza. I got angel hair pasta with marinara sauce on it. It was so delicious. I asked for extra butter because I like just butter on uh, angel hair pasta. And she brought me like a bowl of like, like a little small bowl of like butter, like not like melted butter, but like <laughs> butter, butter. And she goes, I think there was miscommunication. She was really, she was really sweet. But anyway, um, I was like, it's fine. And it was so delicious. It was a huge like heaping bowl of angel hair pasta with marinara in it. But like I, w when you get pasta at Puccini's, it comes with a side salad and the side salad is literally like this big. And it's like th this like iceberg lettuce, but it's like really good lettuce. And then um, tomatoes, those like little tomatoes cut up. And black olives, they have the best black olives in there. I love black olives in a salad, I don't know why. And cheese, mozzarella cheese and stuff in it. And they always get it with ranch. And their ranch for some reason, I think it's because it's made in house. I was actually thinking about this last night because I came home and my stomach was really hurting. And it's been a while since my stomach has hurt. You know, I haven't talked about that on here in a while. And it's because I've kind of been steering clear of creamier based things. And um, my stomach just really hasn't hurt that much. And I honest, I to God, I didn't even really think about it last night when I was getting the salad. And um, so I got two ranches but like I got the you know marinara and I got home, but I didn't even eat that much of the pasta. I brought the majority of it home. Oh my god, I got home and my stomach was like absolutely just like killing. As I'm sitting here eating a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got home last night, and I was tired, but I was like I need to watch this stuff. I'm not gonna lay down, so. I finished watching Triangle of Sadness. It was very bizarre. Um, I wouldn't say that I loved it. I wouldn't recommend it to people. It's, there's a disgusting scene in the middle of it. I was like telling Tanya, cause she was like, do you, you know, she was like, what do you think? And I said, I don't think you'd make it through this video, this movie, Tanya. Like it's like, there's a scene in the middle of the movie where people get really seasick. That's all I'll say about it. Um, like, but it's like a, a 15, 20 minute scene. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like two minutes. It's like a long scene. 
the movie's just really bizarre. So anyway, I didn't love it. I don't understand why it's up for Best Picture. You know, it's um, it's kind of crazy to me sometimes how these movies get nominated for Best Picture or whatever. So then I was like looking at my list of movies and I was like, okay, which one should I watch next? And the the movie that I wanted to watch the least was All Quiet on the Western Front because I just don't like army movies. I just don't like war movies. Like they're very sad and depressing to me and I just don't like to watch them. So I thought, well, I should just watch this now. So this was my mentality, right? Because I learned this years ago. Give your speech first in class. That way you can sit and watch everybody else give their speeches. So I was like, okay, why don't I just watch this movie now and get it over with, right? So I watched, it was like two and a half hours long. I watched All Choir in the Western Front. It's on Netflix. It was fantastic. It was really, really good. And Tanya was like, I don't think I could watch it because I can't do like all subtitles. It's not in all subtitles. And I don't even think it's dubbed. Um, like I kept on like looking at the lips because it looked like the, the lips were not matching like the sound. But I think it's like one of those Netflix movies. There's a couple of them out there, like that 1899 or whatever, that movie about the ship. It was the same way where it was like they were speaking in English, but like it didn't it didn't match the, the audio. This seems kind of like that to me, too, but it's not distracting at all at all. Like it doesn't, you know, whatever. And it's just it's really this. Um, well, it's about the First World War and it's about these kids that go join um the, the army in Germany and um, it's really about just being like the camaraderie of these soldiers and the friendships that are built and life and death and um, it's a riveting movie it just absolutely is a very sad movie um, but I would recommend it I think it's good like I told Tanya today I said I think you would really enjoy this movie so I watched that and then I was like, okay, this is so sad. I need to watch something else. And I felt like I had had a couple people in my comment section say like, oh, After Sun is really good. And it's about this girl and her, you know, vacation with her dad and you should watch it. And I knew that this Paul Meskel was getting like all this attention for best actor for this picture. So I rented After Sun and I watched it. I don't know what people are talking about. And I don't know why he got nominated for a best actor for this. Like, He's a good-looking guy, and um, he was. I thought he was a good actor in the movie, but I don't know that I think that it was best actor uh, worthy, if that makes sense. Um, I was very confused by the movie. Like, I even had to look up stuff at the end to, like, explain the ending to me because I didn't understand the ending of what happened. And really what it's about is this 11-year-old girl, she's about to turn 11 and it's her last ever vacation or last ever memory that she has really with her dad because her parents are like divorced or something you don't even know that and um they go to the turkish coast on this vacation and they stay at this like rundown resort and um it's just like the two of them like going to the beach and going to the pool and going out to eat and they like record the whole thing like through like you know like they film the whole thing and then but when i read the synopsis it was like this woman looks back on things that she didn't know about her dad at the time no that wasn't in there at all like and then i was like reading all these articles and it was like the movies about mental health and grief and and I can understand it being about mental health. Like, I, I could kind of grasp that a little bit. It just seemed like he was really sad and disheartened with his life. Like, and you didn't know really why. You didn't know if it was because he didn't have a job. And I'm going to be honest with you. I really kind of thought, and I thought this was where the movie was going. Because you don't know, like, when you're watching it. Like, really, you don't know when, when the vacation is. There was one point of reference... When they, oh, the only point of reference was they're listen, they're li by the pool and they're listening to ear, uh, earphones, like on a Walkman. And the earphones are like, but even then, like the earphones, like they didn't seem so dated to me. But her dad, like on this one time talking on the phone, he's talking to somebody and it sounds like there's a man on the other end of the phone. And he says, I love you too. But then she says later that she overheard him say it to her mom. So it must have been his, her mom that she was saying it to. I don't know. 
And then there's something on his shoulder towards the end of the movie, and he sa she says, what is that on your shoulder? And he says, I, I, I don't quite know what it is. I honestly thought, like, watching this movie, I was like, is this a story about a girl who's, like, dad, like, her parents got divorced because he was gay, and then he ends up dying of AIDS or something? Like, I really, I kind of, like, thought that was where it was going a little bit. I'd be interested to know if anybody else out there thought this whatsoever, because it just was so ambiguous, like, the whole movie. And it's really about her coming of age, too, and coming into adolescence. And, you know, she hangs out with, like, these older kids at the resort, and the resort is dilapidated. And I do really think that the resort being dilapidated and run down is, like, symbolic of his how he feels about himself. And so, supposedly, they say that, like, he took his life afterwards, and that, like, at the very end of the movie, like, he's standing there and he watches her go through the airport and then he turns and he walks out through these double doors. And, like, there's these in-between scenes that show, like, her as, like, an older woman. Not old woman, but, like, when she's, like, in her 30s or whatever and she has, like, a child of her own. And she's, like, um, there's, like, they're at, like, this rave or something and there's, like, these, um, what do you call it, flashing lights at this rave. And her dad is there, too. Or her memory of her dad. And somebody said that, like, when she walks... I had already finished the movie by the time I started reading these articles, but that when he walks through the double doors, you can see the flashing lights, and so that insinuates that that was, like, her very last ever memory of him and that he, like, was gone after... Like, he died after that. Insinuating that he kind of, like, took his life. Well, there was a scene... And then these articles were like, well, he said he didn't see himself living to 40. It was one scene in a mo in wh where they're on this boat, which was another bizarre scene to me because... I was like, I was just really trying to figure it out and piece it together, but I was like, it kind of felt like he was hitting on this guy on the boat a little bit, and then, but I was like, well, maybe not. The guy said he was going to have a baby, and then he was like, oh, that's great for you, or something like that, and he said, yeah, I can't even, the guy was like, I'm going to be 30, and he goes, well, I can't imagine myself ever making it to 40, but like, people say that stuff all the time, and they, it doesn't mean that they're suicidal, so I don't know, like, I was... Very confused by the movie. When it was over, I was just kind of like, huh. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. Um, I thought he was a good looking guy. I thought he did a nice job, a nice acting job. And I do not think that he deserves the Academy Award for it. So. I'd like to see him in other stuff to see what he does. I did look up his whole Wikipedia because I didn't know anything about this guy, this Paul Meskel guy. Um, so that was, there was that. And then at that point, I was like wide awake still after having watched all this. But it was like four o'clock in the morning and I was like, the last, two, okay, so Blonde is like three hours. And then the other two movies I have, Living, both Living and Causeway are like an hour, 35, 40 minutes. Um... So that'll be easy to finish. I'm going to try to finish those tonight. I'm going to try to put up an Oscar movie tomorrow, an Oscar predictions video tomorrow. I'm real excited about that. So anyway, I don't know why. It's just like I, it didn't even occur to me until like the last two days to do that, you know, but so, um, and then like I said, tomorrow night, because I don't, tomorrow night, I don't want to like, I don't have to, on Sunday, I want to just relax on Sunday. I may vlog on Sunday. I may not. Well, I'm sure I will, but. I want to get excited for the Oscars, and I don't want to, you know, like, I may go over to Tanya's. I'm not sure yet. I may just want to stay here in my PJs, and if Alex wants to watch them, he'll watch them. Tanya said today, she said, I just don't think the Oscars are going to be that good this year. And I thought, oh, don't be that way about it. <laughs> don't, especially if I want to come over there, girl. She's like, I mean, she's like, I just, all these movies are so sad and depressing this year. I was like, Tanya, the Oscars are always sad and depressing movies. But I was thinking about it, and it's like, well, the blind side wasn't necessary, necessarily. Aaron Brock of that. Some of my favorite movies weren't necessarily depressing you know so I don't know we'll see um so I think okay so then afterwards it was like four o'clock in the morning but I was raring to go I know y'all are like Peter you stayed up till four o'clock in the morning oh, no I stayed up till six o'clock in the morning because I then watched the newest episode of Truth Be Told, the show with Octavia Spencer, which I absolutely love. And um, it was really good. Tiny was like, 
I didn't think it was a very good episode this week. I go, Tanya, it was such a fantastic episode this week. She was like, well, she goes, I'm ready for something to happen. So then I was like trying to figure out if I was going to watch Dear Edward, Your Honor, Your Honor only has two episodes left, or Poker Face. And so I was Googling to see how many episodes t Poker Face has total, and it had 10 episodes total, and it was the 10th episode, and I was like, oh my God, this is a season finale, so I have to watch it. <laughs> Which was even more of an excuse to stay up. So I stayed up and I watched the season finale of Poker Face, which ends so fantastically. You guys, if you're looking for a show to binge and you have not started it and you have Peacock, I'm telling you, go watch Poker Face with Natasha Leonch, or Leon. She is so good in it. And it ends in such a great way. I loved it. I was, cause I was kind of worried about what's going to happen at the end of it. And it's kind of funny what happens, but... I mean, not funny, but, like, it sets it in motion again. It got renewed for a second season. I wish, like... These shows... I know my eating is killing somebody out there. I'm sorry, but I'm starving and I have to eat. I very rarely do it in videos. Um... I know, like, they can't, but I wish that, like, when the season gets, or the series gets renewed, and they're, like, halfway through a season, they'd start filming, so that, like, when the ne that season was over, we'd have the next season right away. Do you ever wish that about TV shows? Yeah, I'm, like, like, La Brea. I just finished season two. Poker Face. I finished that last night. Your Honor, I got one more episode of that. Well, I've, I have the episode from this week to watch. I haven't watched that yet this week. And I have one more episode of that. And then I think, like, Truth Be Told, I think Truth Be Told, and, well, Dear Edward, I don't know how, has how many episodes total, but I think Truth Be Told has, like, maybe, like, two, three episodes left. I'm, like, two or three, you know. It's tonight, Friday night. We got RuPaul's Drag Race tonight. Oh, my God. Yes, ma'am. We got lots of shows to watch. Um, somebody's having a fire. I can smell it. Like they just lit it. It smells so good. But we are, we might have to watch RuPaul's Drag Race tomorrow night and watch Blonde tonight because Blonde's so long. But like I'm like two to three weeks away from like not having any shows, which means that's when I'm going to get back into Fear of the Walking Dead. Tanya was talking to me about some documentary. I can't remember what it was, but she said it was like some about this guy in Canada that was like a doctor and he had like a commune. It was real weird, she said. And he was murdered. Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe she didn't say it was on Hulu. I don't remember. I can't believe it's almost Oscar night. Seems so strange. Seems so strange that there's like so many years that I just didn't care, you know? And this year, like, really care. Okay. Let's go into my vlog and read a couple comments real quick. I haven't done that in a little bit of a while. Okay, Lori was commenting on the geese, and she said, no, not weird that they're flying north. They're going home for the spring and summer. I know that, but I was just like, isn't it kind of early for all of that? I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of early for all of that, okay? Okay, my battery died, so I have to go inside and get another battery, but we are back to the front porch. Okay, um, so... Andy commented, how did you not like Jen in Dawson's Creek? She's one of my favorite characters, LOL. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know what it was about Jen that bugged me. I think part of it had to do with her hairdo. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But, I mean, I ended up liking her by the, you know, the end of the show. But what's so funny about this is, the way that I had feelings about people on the show has lasted, like, 
throughout their entire careers, like me watching them and things, you know, down the road. Um, for example, like I was talking about Joshua Jackson who played Pacey, like Pacey was probably like one of, I mean, I loved James Vanderbeek. I always loved James Vanderbeek on the show. Um, but like he hasn't really done anything, you know, with his career lately. Is he in anything anymore? I don't think he is, but anyway. But um, Joshua Jackson, I just loved Pacey so much, right? And so, like, when I saw him in that show not too long ago uh, was with Reese Witherspoon, I was like, oh, you know, like, that's, you know, Pacey. I love him so much. And then the brother and sister that moved into town, I think, and the brother came out on the show. Do you remember that? I remember it being, like, a big deal because he came out as gay. But the sister, do you remember her? She's on the revamp of Gossip Girl because <laughs> Alex watches Gossip Girl, which just recently got canceled. He was devastated. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was not happy that it got canceled. But anyway, she plays, like, a teacher on the show or something like that, and it's so weird to see her because she literally looks exactly like, although, I mean, you know, 20 years older, but same haircut and same everything, and she talks the same way. I mean, her acting range is not large. Like, she, <laughs> like she plays one character static, okay? But do you know what I'm talking about? The sister, like the sister-brother duo and Dawson's Creek that moved in down the road. I will say this, like, I always forget this about Dawson's Creek. I was say, thinking about this last night after I got done vlogging. Like, I always talk about, like, Dawson's Creek, Creek being such a, like like a wholesome homey show and all that kind of stuff. But didn't the mother, okay, the mother and father got divorced and it wasn't it because the mother cheated on the dad with somebody that she was having an affair with at the news station? Am I wrong about that? <laughs> and, and Dawson was like devastated and all that kind of stuff. I just loved their house and I remember, I don't know why I remember this, but they had like a white house inside their white house. Do you remember that? It was like a little miniature house. I don't know why I remember that. But Andy, that's why. It was because of her hairdo. <laughs> Tracy Turnblatt, that is a hair don't. <laughs> that is what I say to Jen. Okay. Um, Okay, Deborah left a very, very long comment. And this is happening on my drama channel about, you guys, I've, I've done my best to go in and, and try to block this. It's multiple accounts at this point, and it's happening literally across YouTube on all, it's not just me. It's, you know, Tati Westbrook and her husband, James, they actually did a whole video about it. Um, but it's happening to multiple YouTubers at this time. I mean, hundreds if not thousands of YouTubers at this point. So there's somebody that's taking my picture from my thing and they're commenting on my videos, like replying to people's responses. And then it's like, it says Peter Mon Telegram is what it says. And it says, you've won a giveaway of an Apple TV or something like that. Okay, my name says Peter Mon with a check mark on my Peter Mon account. So just so you know, unless you get a response from Peter Mon with a check mark, it's not me. So just so you know. But thank you, Deborah, for that. Appreciate it. She said, now on with the video. Thank you, Deborah. Now on with the video. That was cute. I like that. Um, Allie Sunshine said, in cold weather, sound travels, uh, sounds travel way further. Maybe that's why you can hear a train now. I did not know that. Is that true? Are you making that up? Is that really true? I did not know that. That's interesting. Okay. Things you learn every day. Emma said, I would really like to hear more about your dad and stepmom. I might become a stepmom, and I am uh, unable to have kids naturally, so I am just curious. Well, let me know what things you'd like to know about him. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because people will say, like, you never talk about your dad. And I'm like, I've told so many stories about my dad. I've talked about, you know, like, growing up and going to the boat and, you know, going to the emergency room with my dad on weekends. I mean, I've told a lot of stories about my dad on here, you know. And, in fact, I was going to say this about that movie After Sun, it was interesting watching it because, um, you know, when my dad and my mom got separated, I think my dad didn't, in retrospect, I don't think that he really knew his financial situation or what it was going to be after going through a divorce, you know? And this was before my stepmom was in the picture and I would have been seven, eight, nine, ten years old, right? Same age as this girl on this trip. And um, 
their trip kind of like in some ways and their interactions kind of like weirdly reminded me like of me and my dad. Like my dad would take a lot of trips. Like I was telling Tanya this today because she was like, well, what did you think of the movie? And I was like, it really reminded me of me and my dad. Like I can remember my dad and I, we would go to like really awesome places um, you know, like the Bahamas or the Caribbean or whatever, but like we wouldn't stay in like real nice places. Like we would stay in like kind of rundown resorts or, I mean, this was like when I was much younger, when I was older, my dad and my stepmom, they just gave me unbelievably blessed vacations, you know? But I think that's when my dad was financially doing better and whatever. I think at that point, like, you know, he kind of didn't really know like what the future was going to hold for him financially, especially after going through a divorce. Um, and you know, he was living in this apartment. And, um, although I remember like loving my dad's apartment. I mean, obviously the apartment complex that my dad lived in that he moved into after separating from my mom is the apartment complex that I had my very first apartment in. So that just goes to say how much like sentimentality there was to that apartment. And, um, I got the exact same apartment. It was like a one bedroom loft. I got the same exact apartment that my dad had. The exact same apartment. Um, which I think is kind of so strange in retrospect, but I love that apartment that my dad had. And um, although I will say that my dad, I don't know why, it, it like came with the apartment and he never like took it down and he would just like laugh about it. But in the bedroom, there was this huge sunset mural. It was like over the entire back wall, like behind the bed. And it was like of a sunset. <laughs> and my dad would just like laugh at it. He thought it was the funniest thing. He liked, I mean, he did, the living room was nice. He had like, um, you know, like a nice rug in there and like a nice couch and stuff like that. But that he had like had it in his office and he ended up bringing it to his apartment. And I can remember going over there. As, I like told tons of stories about my dad because I can remember like telling all the stories about the Christmas tree and him throwing it out the window. And you know, one of my favorite memories is like when my dad would pick me up when I was a kid, we'd go to the grocery store. And I've told this on here too. And my dad would, you know, pick out steaks. I used to love New York strips when I was a kid and he would make like wild rice and then he would make um, Stouffer's spinach souffle. I loved that as a kid and we would have that for dinner. But then he would say, you can pick out any kind of like cookie or ice cream that you want to have as like a snack. And I would always pick out these things that were called like grasshopper, grasshopper cookies. And they were like Oreos, but they had like this mint, green mint filling in the middle of them. They were called like grasshoppers or something. I can't remember. But I always picked those out and I can remember we would go to the video store and I would pick out like all of these movies to like, he would let me pick out like whatever I wanted to rent. I'd always get like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like the original. And then I would want to get like candy because I loved that scene, you know, that in a world of pure imagination, when, at the beginning of it, like when they're eating all that candy. Um, I love like that scene and I love just to like eat all this candy while I was watching that scene. I don't know why, I don't know why, so. But if you want to know like specific stories about my dad and my stepmom and stuff like that, like I have no problem talking about it. I remember the very first time that I ever like really did something with my stepmom was, I think it was around my birthday and we went to a Pointer Sisters concert and I took a friend and I remember she like made this tray of like all of this fruit. And I remember that was like the very first um, like big time interaction that I had with her. And then, and I probably was, well, they got married when I was 12. So that was probably when I was like 10, maybe. And then I remember, I can remember the, um, the apartment that she lived in and um, it was called Chateau in the Woods. It was this apartment complex called Chateau in the Woods. And, um, for some reason, like, I was real entranced with this apartment because it was, like, it was, like, in the woods. And, like, the, the whole name of it, I can remember pulling in there and the name I thought was so cool. And she got this gray cat, and which she ended up giving to her sister um, because my dad was, like, allergic to cats and stuff like that. And so when she moved in with him, she, like, gave the cat to her sister. Um, and uh, because her sister had cats and loved cats and stuff like that, which is so funny because I have to tell you the story. This is like an in-between story. So my stepmom, her sister ended up, who he married, his mother was like my sixth grade 
English teacher <laughs> who I didn't like very well. And her sister and um, my stepmom's sister and brother-in-law got married at our, like, our house. And so <laughs> this sixth grade English teacher of mine, like, was out there <laughs> for all of it. So anyway, but... Um, the funny thing about the story is that, so, like, for a year or two, uh, she had this cat, and the cat was, like, gray, and y'all know I'm allergic to cats, too. I don't like cats, but the cat was real sweet. It was, like, this little kitten when she first got it, and um, she was like, Peter, you named the cat, and I named it Flannel because of the cologne, gray flannel. <laughs> I think she might have given it to her sister. I don't think she had it, like, that long. I think she might have given it to her sister, like, after maybe just a couple months. Because it feels like she moved in a lot sooner than then. It's like weird the things like when you look back on your life and you like have these memories about things. It's like you remember some of them and other things you're like, I don't really remember that as well as I thought I did. I don't know how old the, the cat was. I feel like she wasn't in that apartment very long either. I feel like... Because this is how I... Okay, so this is when I knew that she moved into her, my dad's house. So my dad during that whole time was building a house and the whole building of the house took like two years and at one point i like came to his house i mean she was there all the time like you know when i would come over and stuff like that she stayed there on the weekends and whatever but i came over there and there were a bunch of boxes like in the like when you came when you go into my dad's house like immediately to the right is like his dining room and it has like these french doors that open into the dining room and i remember like and then you walk through the dining room to go into the kitchen and so I walked through to go to the kitchen and I like looked down to my right and there were, this is like when I was like, it was before they got married. So it was like, I must've been like 11. And I looked down to my right and there were like all these boxes of like dishes and kitchenware and stuff like that. And that was when I knew that she had like moved in. And then like they sat me down and told me that weekend that she had like moved in and stuff. My parents were always really great. Like I look back on like the parenting of my parents and things like that. They were always just so fantastic on sitting me down and including me in the conversation and making me understand why things happened the way that they did and, you know, and um, whatever. The only thing was like that happened was I can remember like my dad didn't tell me that they got married until after they got married because he thought I would be so upset about it or something like that, I can remember. And really what's so weird about it was my dad had dated somebody else for a long time and um, and I don't know why, but like weirdly, like I wasn't upset about my mom at all. Like, I mean, that ship had sailed. I knew my dad and my mom were not getting back together. Like, you know, when people are like, kids always want their parents to get back together. I never wanted my parents to get back together. I never had that dream. I never dreamed that dream. I never thought that dream. I never thought it was going to happen. I never, whatever. And I never really even, like Tommy and I were talking about this the other day. I never really even knew until later that my parents didn't really like each other. Like they did such a good job of co-parenting that I didn't really know that. Like, I mean, I knew that they didn't, I knew that they weren't each other's biggest fans, but I didn't know, I didn't know that they had, they respected each other. I will say that, but, um, whatever. So I can remember like my dad saying something to me, he got in the car and I saw his ring and I said something and I started asking him about this other girl that he had dated that by that point should have been like way out of the picture, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know why, like that was like, I was confused or upset about that, but yeah. And um, so that was that. I can remember like one of the first things ever was like, when she like officially moved in, like I can remember like we were like eating dinner or something and like I went and I put like put my dishes like I washed them off and then I like left them in the sink and at, and at my mother's house like my mom and I would stand there and do the dishes together and then put them in the in the in the dishwasher so I don't know why on that occasion I just like um like left them in the sink I don't know why I did it but anyway she said to me I don't know how you do things at your mother's house but at our house we put the dishes in the dishwasher I'll never forget it. and she didn't say it to me like nasty or anything she just said it you know and I will say this you know for the person asking I can't see, let me see what your name is hold on real quick dear for Emma you know one of the greatest pieces of advice that I can give you is something that came actually from my stepmother, you know? 
And, and I told Caroline this when Caroline became a stepmother, because Caroline's husband, Mike, he had two sons, you know, before he and Caroline got married. And then David is their son with between Caroline and Mike. One of the things that my stepmom said to me, she and I got into a fight, and I can't remember what it was about or anything like that, but I was about 13 or something like that at the time. And I was really upset, and I was really upset with her. And I remember I was like sitting on the step into the garage, like the concrete step. And, and I can remember she was just kind of like patting my head. Like, and she said to me, she said, you know, she was like, sweetie, she said, I don't want to be your mom. She said, you have a mom. And she was like, this, I don't know why saying this gets me emotional because it reminds me of the, of the end of my mom's life. But she said, you have a mom and you have a really good mom. And I don't want to take that away from her. And I don't want to be that. She said, but I don't want to be your friend either. She said, you know, because that's not my role here. And she said, but I can be something completely special and completely different than nobody else can be because I'm your stepmom. I'm not your friend and I'm not your mom. I'm your stepmom. It's something completely different, you know? And I remember her saying that to me and like it changed everything. And you know, it's so funny because like my mom and my dad didn't get along when I, was, I knew that more in high school. And so my stepmom and my mom would like communicate about like rides and things like that and counseling appointments and tennis and whatnot, you know, and who was going to pick me up for the weekend. And, um, you know, I've shared the story on here a lot, but when my mom, or the very last time that my mom got checked into the hospital, she didn't want to go. I think she knew that she was never going to come out if she went back in. But she was coherent that day. It was the day that she fell in the shower and my aunt called my dad and my dad came over here and he like rushed her to the hospital with my aunt. Well, my mom was in a wheelchair and she was refusing to be admitted to the hospital. And she was like, at that point, I mean, things were really bad. And she was like, I mean, she needed to be in the hospital like, you know, ASAP. And, um, we were all standing around there. I'm like, I mean, I was saying to my mom, mom, you have to go. And she, she was like, no, I'm not, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. You know, I don't ever forget like the door open of the emergency room. And like, we all turned and my stepmom came walking through and she was like crying. And she said, she looked down at my mom. She didn't talk to anybody else. She said, I don't think she did. And she like looked down at my mom and she said, I've been driving around the parking lot. Or she said it to me, I can't remember, but she said, I've been driving around the parking lot. And I finally called my mom because I didn't know if I should go in or not. Because her mom was, you know, had been a stepmom too. And my stepmom had had a stepfather, you know, whatever. And um, she said, that her mom said, you should go in. You're his step parent. You're part of this. And so she said, I felt like I needed to be here. My mom, like, <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, so she walked over to my mom in the wheelchair. My mom just kind of like looked up at her and she was like, you look so pretty today. And my stepmom's like real tall. And she like knelt down like on one leg and she said, she was like, sweetie, you need to go in the hospital. So first of all, she said something about, like, she had an earpiece on, like, a Bluetooth. And she said, my mom said something about that, I remember. But my mom, she, my stepmom said to my mom, she said, you need, sweetie, you need to go into the hospital. Like, this is bad. And my mom was like, well, I don't know. And my stepmom took my mom's hand and held it up to each other. And she said, do you see your hand? And it was like real pale compared to my stepmom's hand. Do you see my hand? She said, you need to go into the hospital. And my mom looked up at me. She looked at my stepmom. She looked back at me and she said, well, if your stepmom says I need to go in the hospital, then I guess I need to go in the hospital. And that was it. And they admitted her. You know, when I think about those times that you have to let people do things for you that you can't do for yourself. My stepmom was not my mom's favorite person. She wasn't her least favorite person. I think she respected the shit out of my stepmom because she never tried to come in and be a mom. 
I think that's the one thing. I think that if my stepmom had come in and tried to sit front row at the wedding and front row at the graduations and, you know, take, take front and center responsibility, you know, I think my mom would have really had a hard time with that because she and several of her friends had gone through that where a stepmom swooped in and all of a sudden it was a sweat, the stepmom was like, you know, the main person and the other person got, the other mom got kind of pushed out because maybe they didn't have as much money or they were older or not as exciting or whatever, you know, that would have killed my mom, you know, that would have absolutely killed my mom and my stepmom knew that and she never did that. She never did that, you know? And so she was that special person in my life that I never had with anybody else and never will, you know? And I'm thankful for that. So. I remember when I was in treatment and she would come to family groups. This was the last time that I went to treatment. And she would come to family groups and she would ask like 50 questions. I remember this one guy in the back. He like shouted one time. He was like, this lady asked so many questions. And you, you kind of don't shut my stepmom up. Like she was kind of raised by wolves a little bit. And she's a tough player. My stepmom's tough. And he was like, this lady asked too many questions. My stepmom shouted back at him. She goes, this lady's going to keep on asking questions until she gets the answers that she needs. You know, but she came to all those family groups and stuff, you know. Anyway. All right, you guys, my grilled cheese is cold. <laughs> I think I might try to go microwave it just a little bit. <laughs> oh my God, this is grilled cheese madness over here. Anyway. I'm going to go inside and uh, start uploading this vlog and uh, see what Alex is up to and if we're going to watch RuPaul or if we're going to watch Blonde first. Well, RuPaul hasn't even started yet. I don't think so. Anyway, I think it starts to start at 8. We like to wait until the commercials are over <laughs> so we can fast forward through all that nonsense. But anyway, so I'm going to go inside and upload the vlog. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday. And if nobody else has told you this today... I love you. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. You might just be putting a smile on their face. You might be cheering them up. You might be making their day. You might be making them feel not so all alone. Also, be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more. And I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!